Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. You would have seen these kinds of manual water pumps on the roadside very often. However, these are slowly getting obsolete with time. Now, you might wonder, how is this hand pump related to our topic? That's because the hand pump is also a type of reciprocating pump. Fancy name for a common pump, right? In today's video, we will be having a brief discussion on how a reciprocating pump works. The hand pump is called a reciprocating pump because of one main reason, the piston. The piston inside the pump moves up and down in a reciprocating manner to deliver us water. Thus, the name. Let's try to understand how it works. The pump has a piston with a one-way valve present in it. There is another one-way valve at the bottom of the hand pump. Both the valves open in the same direction. When a person pulls the force rod up, the connecting rod pushes the piston downwards. This causes the valve in the piston to open and lets water in. Due to the weight of the water and the downward force, the second valve remains closed closed. When the force rod is pushed down, the piston is moved up. The one-way valve in the piston closes and moves the water up to the outlet. While this is happening, the bottom one-way valve opens and water fills the reservoir. This is due to the low pressure created at the reservoir due to the upwards action of the piston. Due to the repeated upwards and downwards motion of the piston, water flows out of the outlet in phases. The hand pumps are extremely tiring to operate for a long time. Anyone who's used them would be able to tell this. Due to this, automated pumps were developed. One such automated pump is the piston reciprocating pump. The construction of these pumps is much similar to the hand pumps. The pump has two one-way valves and a piston. The linear motion of the piston is obtained by connecting it to a crank by means of a connecting rod. The crank is rotated by an electric motor. The suction and delivery valves are placed in the respective pipes as shown. Both the valves are one-way valves which open only in one direction upwards. When the crank starts to rotate, the piston moves to and fro in the cylinder. For the sake of understanding, let's call this point on the cylinder as A and this point on the cylinder as B. Let's assume that the piston is at point A initially. We now switch the pump on and the crank starts rotating. The piston now moves from point A to point B. This causes a low pressure in the piston cylinder which forces the liquid from the suction valve into the reservoir. The output valve remains shut as it cannot open inwards towards the piston cylinder. As the crank continues rotation, the piston is now moved from point B to point A. When this happens, the suction valve shuts and the output valve opens. As the piston moves from point B to A, it forces the liquid out of the pump through the output valve. This is how a single acting reciprocating pump works. But there is a small problem with the single acting pumps. The supply of water is not continuous. This is solved with the help of a double acting pump. The working of a double acting pump is similar to the single acting pump. Normally, in a single Single acting pump, water is pumped through the output wall for every two strokes. Whereas, in a double acting pump, this is done for every stroke of the piston. This doubles the output of the pump. This diagram explains the construction of the pump much better. As they say, a picture is worth a thousand words. As you can see, the pump has four walls instead of two. The output of the pump is doubled by utilizing the return stroke of the piston. When suction stroke occurs in one side of the piston, delivery stroke occurs on the other side. So, for one complete revolution of the crank, we will have two delivery strokes. The disadvantage of this pump is the pressure it operates at. Piston reciprocating pumps can operate effectively without leakage at a pressure range of up to 3000 psi. Any higher, the chances of leakage and damage to the piston are high. To avoid this, a different type of pump called a plunger pump is used. We'll be talking about more reciprocating pumps in our next video. So until then, stay tuned and stay safe. Bye.